treatment. And then, of course, we want to talk about uh, do you want to offer any souvenirs, information, note cards, that kind of thing uh, from your simulation? So we're going to talk about that, too. Uh, for the class, normally our classes only have nine weeks of chats and they're half hour. In this class, you notice our classes are longer, aren't they? And that's because traditionally we met twice a week for one to one and a half hours each week. So that's the normal format, and we did it for 11 weeks. So um, if you're thinking about the end of the term, the good news is you won't have other classes meeting at the same time, right? So that's that's the good news. But um, um, if, if you're unable to finish the final presentation or whatnot, we need to schedule it before that last class because that happens on a Monday right before the end of term. Now there's one housekeeping thing I need to ask everyone. I want you to think about it is for our Memorial Day class, which is next Monday, I had scheduled to meet on the Tuesday, but that's actually a week later. So we have to meet before Monday. And I was thinking maybe the Thursday night class would be our week eight class. I wanted to check with everyone to see if you're available or if you prefer a different date. So before class ends tonight, I need you to tell me when our week eight class will happen, okay? Because we don't want to take out the Memorial weekend. We want you to be able to enjoy it. Okay, so Marcus, I'm going to grab the OS grid. Um, we could go over to OSCC, but we were having trouble getting content from there, so I was going to take them to OS Grid instead. Uh, okay. We also couldn't get back from there, uh, so we were having to log off and, and uh, reconnect. So let me let me get the hypergrid information. We're going to go to Right Plaza. So let's see. I'm scrolling down. Here we go. All right, so for the class, I'm going to share in Adobe Connect and also here locally in case you're only local, right? This link I'm sharing is what we're going to put in our map interface. Rod, I know you already have experience with this, so no worries. Um, and Rod's here too. Wow, that's awesome. Um, so click your map, open your map, and I'm demonstrating this in Adobe Connect, Marcus, just so you know. So you open up your map, and it's, of course, the button in the lower right corner. We're using Phoenix Firestorm for ours. And uh, it's OK if you're showing a different method, Marcus, on your video. That's great, because we like to see all the different ways we do this. You click the Find button, and you'll notice that my map is now showing a location. I don't see the location, but I know it's there, right? And of course, I'm going to hg.osgrid.org colon 80 and the 80 is the port number right and we know that means it's a website <laughs> and of course uh, right plaza is the name of the region okay now I want you to hit the teleport button once that's up for you and on our recording on Adobe Connect for posterity I want you to know that uh, so go ahead and hit the teleport button once you have that copied into your map in the find area and you click the word the button find and you see the red circle hovering over hg.osgrid.org go ahead and hit teleport so this is a little bit like um, visiting other web pages except we've logged into a tool and we're using that tools resources to power where we're going and now we're also on this tour tool visiting this is OS grid it's the largest grid that's one of the reasons we came here uh, in the hypergrid for all the different regions. And there's a location, Hypergrid Business, that publishes the grid report. They just came out with that, and I'll link that to you guys in a, in a minute. Once you have everything rendered and you're comfortable, we can go shopping. Now, we're not going to be here for long because I know we have a lot of things to cover. But let's go try to buy something and see what that's like from a different service. Now the shopping center is in the direction I'm looking in. So let's see which direction that is. It is to the southwest. I always click on my map to see which way I'm pointed because the map always, south is always at the bottom. It's not spinning around like the mini map. <laughs> now there are others here too. I see Mia. So we have other other guests as well or residents, right? Everyone who has an account on the server itself is considered a resident, right? So that's uh, one way we think of them. Anyway, if you want to go grab an item, 
I'd, I'd like you to click on it to, to buy it or I double click the floor to get back above it. So any of these boxes that I'm showing, I'm at the sculptor Nathy Adema's uh, collections. Oops. I was just inside my head there for a moment. I've disabled my camera constraints and several of you had mentioned that you couldn't get close enough to objects to see them. I think that you mentioned it, Joe. Um, you'll notice, and I'll demonstrate today how I did that. I'm going to pick up these bookshelves. So I just left click them. And of course, the buy menu pops up. It says buy for zero dollars from Candy Saw. And I will say buy. Okay. It's a mesh bookshelf, which means it was developed in something like Blender or Maya. And um, the materials were applied to it. It was textured. Everything was set in, in that tool. And then it was exported as a DAE file uh, you know, and imported into the world. Now, they had to import the texture, too, and then apply it. And then it looks like that, which is really very nice. It has, uh, looks like it has teddy bears on top of it and a very cool mesh bookshelf. Here is a Japanese screen. And Marcus, I don't know if you're with me. Let me take a look. You're probably looking at other content, so if you <laughs> oh, let me come see what you're looking at. Oh, I'm I'm looking I'm looking at you. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So you were seeing what I was selecting. That's good. See, he's so cool. His camera controls, by the way, class. He is outside. Uh, he has locked his camera onto me, so he sees what I'm touching, what I'm doing, you know. And he did this with the people. You know, he can. He may have another tool, a custom tool set up also, because he can manipulate his different camera viewpoints to collect his machinima. He's doing video capture, uh, perhaps using. Uh, are you using OBS or are you using um, uh, Blender? I am using OBS, and I'm doing most of my camera movement with a 3D mouse, which lets me uh, just kind of slide my camera all over the place. Is that the Space Mouse or something else? Or yes, it is the uh, 3D Connection Space Navigator. Yeah. What's funny about that, guys, is uh, in 1995 through 97, I used the Spaceball 2003, which was the earlier version of it, uh, the $2,000 version of it. It had eight CAD buttons and had all these configurable things on it. It looked like a big scoop with a, uh, like a baseball in the center. And it, it did not move, but it was pressure sensitive. So I could grab that ball and twist it, give it some torque, and I could go spinning in the virtual world if I was in a helicopter or some sort of device. So anyway, I've bought a couple of items, and I'm going to open my inventory next. And I'm going to go to Recent Items in the Inventory. That's that Center tab. And you'll notice we have a new folder called My Suitcase, which is one of our goals when we make this purchase, you don't want to purchase a ton of things immediately because the database needs time to first send it to you. Secondly, for you to register it. And when we get back to Virtual Harmony, we also want the database to sync so that it recognizes that we've picked up artifacts and we need to add them to both, you know, from the sender and the receiver databases. Okay. So, um, and of course, I'm not articulating everything that the software is doing. I'm just giving you a very simple explanation here. Now, hey, we have Joe. Uh, Joe, I'll take a step back so you can fall to the floor. There you go. And what I was buying, by the way, Joe, was right over here on these boxes here. Uh, they had some wonderful screens that would look great in your art museum. And some shelves in case you wanted to put some artifacts or souvenirs. And when we look at these sculpted columns. Sculptees are formed similar to mesh. Uh, they use vectors and connect the dots to create a very detailed 3D representation of something. So you're not applying a flat texture to the prim to do it. That's actually a, a connected artifact. When you pull back with your camera on a sculptee and then drawing close, there's some examples of sculptees over here. They normally deform when you get to a certain distance. Maybe they're not sculpted. They're not deforming. And by deforming, I mean the shape seems to collapse in on itself and then, and then we uh, reconfigure. So these must be mesh. Okay. Does everyone have a My Suitcase? 
you can tell me either in the Adobe Connect chat or in the uh, OS Grid chat. Remember, we have to be with now, instant messages when you're traveling can sometimes be delayed. So I will send you one. Hi, uh, do you have a My Suitcase folder? Because that's the goal of today's journey <laughs> is, is to make sure you can travel, then to get home, and then also to, um, to be able to use the content. I, I know Rod has one because we did a, a hypergrid travel with with Jeff Strike and, and Rod um, last week. Oh, you can buy anything. You're saying you don't have, when you go to your recent items, you don't see my suitcase for the thing you bought? So go to your inventory. So go to inventory first. Then look in the center. I'm looking at recent items because uh, when you buy something, it takes a moment for the for the server and the database to send you the item. And it sends it to you in my suitcase, so it pre it's preserving the med meta tag for the creator. So you notice I'll look at this first thing I bought, one of the columns here. Okay. And if you're not logged... In, Okay, sure. And of course, the, the items in this building here, the Q's Boutique that I'm standing before, uh, the ones upstairs, they, um, they all were purchasable. I bought them from the um, wall there. There is, a, there is the notion that permissions have to be set for you to be able to get a copy of the contents of the item. So like when, when we sell things, remember, we can sell the original, we can sell the contents. In other words, what's inside the contents of the object that, that we're purchasing from, or we can buy the overall object with its contents. So there's three ways of thinking about it. Yep, I went inside this building here. is automatically going through the floor because the ceiling's kind of low and I have mine defaulted to three meters, right? So I just went upstairs is what I did. And I did it the lazy woman's method by double click teleporting. <laughs> and then and remember that's a feature I set in preferences. Let me pull that up. And I set it in uh, movement, the movement view, the movement tab, and towards the bottom where it says double click on land. And I selected teleport clicked point. That's just a mobility thing. So that's very easy for me to pull you guys up and go to your side. Like if I wanted to see what Joe was doing, I can pull his name up. And he's already um, got his stuff off. Let's check on Zalamar. Now Zalamar's over here. Did you get what you needed, Zalamar? Do you have a my suitcase? If you don't, we can come back and at leisure get. But he, let me go up to where you need to be. I'll just send my camera through the wall. Double click teleport up here. You can come join me. The Japanese screen. And I also bought these sculpting columns because I love 3D. Those are often one prim shapes that have this wonderful 3D perspective, right? Um, some of you wanted a rug. Looks like we have a carpet here. Of course, if it's full permission, we can retexture it. Because I know at least one of you wanted um, a rug. Maybe we want plants. Now let me... And I'm getting a message that says this was put in your inventory folder. And you can see them appearing here. Now, your bandwidth is also a factor. So if you notice, it takes a moment. And you just give it a moment. Once you have the content in your inventory, we can head home, okay? So for those of you who have a My Suitcase folder, uh, go ahead and head on home. And if you don't, we can always come back and do this at our leisure. But what we've done here is we are on a totally different grid. You'll notice I've had time to render the map on the world map. So I'm seeing Wright Plaza. There are other grids here as well. I mean, other uh, regions, other landing points. And where I found this, I'm going to link it for you in Adobe Connect. 
was at or uh, was at um, I went to the OS grid site and I asked for their grid list and you'll notice on um, what you're seeing on Adobe Connect and for you Marcus I'll just go ahead and explain I'm at the osgrid.org site and I hovered over grid and I went down to hypergrid right and that's how I pulled up these different destinations it tells you the coordinates and for those of you who have installed an OS uh, an OpenSIM server you notice that's the, the coordinates when we use the defaults when we installed ours but at this one they have over 20,000 regions right I, I believe I'd have to take a look it gives you some of the stats excuse me 906 VAR regions 9,500 95, total regions right and then of course the number of users okay so you see some of the grid stats on this page as well in the upper left corner all right so I was thinking of overall because they have over half of the regions okay all right so now Marcus we were thinking of heading back to virtual harmony and looking at the projects because we're doing design studio work and looking at the examples uh, did you want to join us I'm happy to if you'd like awesome you're welcome yeah and he created a landmark in case you want to create one before we leave here under the world menu landmark this place you know what's weird Marcus is my landmarks don't always work when I'm remote so you're lucky that yours always work <laughs> I use mine and it'll always say uh, destination not found but it's probably the way I've configured my firestorm okay so Rod we're heading home we have several ways we can do it and the way I normally do it is control shift H let's see if it's working today so I'm heading home um, now my database is available again wonder if my my suitcase is I'm looking in my recent items I'm looking in my suitcase and you'll notice all my content is available and it's being indexed by the local database okay so it's something to be aware of is that we have to have it stored in our local database if I had logged off from there and hadn't come back sometimes I will come back with artifacts that I can't use they'll say unavailable and that's because I haven't really established the index pointers to these to this content right I also haven't been respectful of the creators meta tags I want all that to still be here and the creators permissions now you notice much of this content is full permission so they're allowing us to modify it to copy it and to transfer it I'm adding the share with group permission uh, so that we work cooperatively well hey Rod we're right here and I know you're not on voice so I'm going to be your voice for the recording lucky you right <laughs> Once for one of the librarians at the um, Illinois Alliance of Library Systems, the ALS, they're in charge of 1,100 libraries in the state of Illinois. She was giving a keynote and her voice cut out. And so she had a, um, a speakeasy with her talk on the note card. She was just going to kick it silent. But we were recording. <laughs> and Marcus will tell you it's a little deadly if there's no, no audio track, right? So I wound up being the voice of Lori Bell, right, uh, for that for that talk, and it was really kind of funny because I tried to uh, sound like her. Okay, this is his project. He's helping a friend who has disabilities. He is paralyzed. He has difficulties accessing a computer and using it. So he's coming up with different strategies to solve that problem. Okay, his goal is to get the collaborative group together to work on this problem with new approaches. One, he's introducing the problem, introducing some of the strategies for two, and three is to use new ideas and insights so he's hoping to solicit from the group different strategies to overcome it and to help him to interact more fully than he does now
eventually he'll have all the media and design guidelines all linked up the different AR, augmented reality goggles, and other devices, and some of the coding for this interaction. So that's this piece of the project. Okay, I'm going to turn on audio in Adobe Connect. I was trying to be you, but it's there's always a cognitive load when you're talking in two channels. I know those of you who are hearing me in two channels want to turn me down in, in, second, in, in virtual harmony, right? So you're not being driven slowly insane. <laughs> but what, so what he's doing here, you'll notice uh, if you guys are looking at his gear, and I know you're thinking, hey, can I use that? Um, the Open VCE viewer, and I'm going to zoom in on it over here, is by Austin Tate, and it's, um, it, it is an accessibility and open virtual collaboration environment. Austin Tate these days is working in Unity and in space and a variety of other virtual worlds as well. He's out of the UK. He's also part of our Project Moses group and, and just a wonderful um, visionary, you know, on how to to collaborate in these kinds of environments. So uh, if anyone needs this viewer, the, the charming thing about it, it's very similar to the viewer we have. Uh, the buttons are bigger. And it also does this preloader at the bottom. So you see these little slides on the very bottom of Rod's um, slide viewer here. That's preloading what he has already loaded on it. And of course, if he's set his permissions to share with group, I should be able to peek inside. Let's see if I can. Hey, um, yes. I can peek inside. I see that he has five slides in here. Some of them are the logo for the thing. So, Rod, um, a tip for you that I would offer is you don't have to keep the logo in there unless you wish to or if Austin Tate in his instructions asks you to, right? Because normally we replace slides so that the talk is all about your content. Uh, but it is a courtesy if the creator, and also you'd have to read the README. Now I double clicked on it, and if it's, if the README, everything in the contents has to be shared with group, and he did. Look, look guys, it's shared with group. <laughs> so the properties on his note card are shared with group, but for some reason the text is not loading. And of course that might happen. Here's the script. If it's shared with group, it should load also. But of course, I've been hypergridding, haven't I? So it's possible that when I'm not traveling around the grid, around the metaverse, around the internet, if you will, that these will open a little more smoothly the next time I connect, right? But um, so what pieces of advice uh, for stage three of Rod's goals uh, can we offer him for his presentation? One thing to think about, Rod, is for the purpose of this class, you have a broader spectrum, a broader set of goals than we re re require for class. Uh, you could put a face on the problem, provide a briefing, uh, offer some content. You might want to have a giver script or um, something that allows the people who interact with your content to take it to the next level. I have a link for everyone. I'm going to post next, and I'll post it for you too, Marcus. It's to the Autoscript site, <laughs> which of course was developed by Hillary Mason. I'm going to put it in the local chat in Virtual Harmony, and I'll also put it in our course tool in our local chat. This tool is at her blog, 3greeneggs.com, and you have to say slash Autoscript to see the tool. I'm going to bring it up. And the reason I'm doing it is it's part of my advice to Rod and the rest of the folks who are, who are thinking about their design studios. It's in four languages. I remember we in 2007, we were at the New Media Consortium Summer Conference, and I tested this for her while she was writing it. She's a computer science professor. Uh, she now runs her own business. She launched business in, in the last two years. And she used to have um, virtual Morocco in Second Life back then. And she brought her computer science undergraduate students in and was teaching them about uh, programming while they created virtual Morocco. And then in class, they actually went to Morocco, the real life planet, you know, planet, the real life <laughs> country <laughs> to visit, which I thought was so cool for a computer science class, right? But she wrote this and she thought through what are the things people commonly want to do? 
And I want to, I'm demonstrating this in um, Adobe Connect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Give Something to an Avatar. Because let's say Rod wants to give things to people who come to his exhibit. Maybe they're touching an artifact and he wants to give them a note card, maybe an object, maybe um, slides from his talk, whatever. In this sense, I'm going to say a note card. So I would like to give a, and I'm using the drop down box for note card. So give something to an avatar. I want to give a note card. And this, this relates to you too, Joe, in what you asked for for your art museum. And I'm going to say when an, an avatar touches your object. And the reason I'm using that option is it's very annoying to have note cards hit you in the face while you're walking, right? To keep popping up and changing your focus. And by focus, I mean where your cursor is, where your attention is, so that you can no longer move, right? Because now you're navigating a note card, right? So um, a repeating timer would be terrible spam to be have a repeating set of note cards flying at you. As soon as the script starts, isn't very useful because that's when the designer resets it or reses it, right? That's not when the audience is there. And then when an avatar is nearby, sounds cool because then it pops up a little thing and says within five meters or whatever. That doesn't always work if the simulator's um, under a certain amount of load, you know, from a performance perspective. And imagine every time you drew near to an object, it slapped a note card on you, you know? <laughs> That would get so annoying. And then when someone says something sounds cool, and that's great if you want to talk to objects and then have them listen to you and respond, right? But um, but if you're a new user, you don't know what to say, so it's not going to know what to listen for. So the best option in this case is when an avatar touches your object, they get a response. They get feedback, and it's going to be information in this. And I'm going to say make my script. And it writes this script. This is the script here. I've highlighted from default down to the closing ellipsis. And it's and I'll I'll describe what's going on. Up above, this these are comments. She used, we use the slash slash for comments. And it tells you how it was generated. And the comment that's really critical for everyone is on line three, which says, note, after you copy this script into your creation, you will also need to copy the item. In other words, you're going to get a script error if there isn't a note card in this object. And, it, and the reason she calls it item is she doesn't know whether you've selected note card, object, landmark, or texture, right? Now let's look at what the script's doing. Default means, you know, this is going to be the default state. And when you touch it, as soon as you touch it, which is what touch start means. And what that means is when you depress the mouse, the left mouse button, you know, as soon as you do that, it's going to execute. See, some of them, if it said touch end, that would be when you release the mouse. So we're really thinking about behavior here. The next is a comment that says it's going to give this thing. And here's what it's doing. LL, you know, is, is begins the function, give inventory. Whatever's in the contents of this primitive, it's going to give, right? But it's not going to give everything. If I had 200 things in this inventory, it's only going to give the first no card, okay? It's going to give it to detected key. So it's detecting you, the person who touched it, okay? And 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 it gives it doesn't care what the inventory name is. It's it's looking in the contents and it's looking for the first note card, which is comma zero. If I had three note cards in there and I want let's say the first one was instructions or information. Let's say the first one's information about the simulation. The second one is instructions and the third was a little survey or a little um, asking for some feedback. I could list this line of code three times and I would say no card comma zero, no card comma one, no card comma two, just so you know. So if you had several note cards in there and you only had this one line of code, it's only going to give the first one in alphabetical order. So it's good to know this is what the script does. Okay, guess what? To get this into second, uh, excuse me, into virtual harmony, into OpenSim, I copy it. And by the way, on this server, Marcus, just so you know, he's not using the OSSL commands. He's using ones that are consistent with, with uh, Second Life for ease of use in class. So I would create a new script. I just go to my scripts folder, right click it and say new scripts. Yeah. And I'm going to call it give a note card. 
because that way I know what it's giving, right? And then I paste it and then I save it. And if I put this in the contents of an object with a note card, it should give the note card if it works, right? So now the test, right? <laughs> Yeah. And of course, I have to check my permissions. I'm going to res a little box on your space here, okay? And I'm going to go check my permissions, which are good. I'm going to share with group so you guys can follow along. I'm going to drag that in here, but I better grab a note card too. So I'm going to... This was a really awful survival score. I was demonstrating the, the test earlier. I'm going to put that in there. <laughs> just for fun. So you notice I have a, a note card in my object and a script called give a note card and I'm going to reset the scripts which is a little button right under the content tab um, reset scripts and it's loading that script and looking for that note card in case you're wondering. Okay. Now if I had added a reset function inside there uh, as its starting state when the object, whenever it's saved or whenever the object reses, then it would automatically do it. Now here's the good news. If I hadn't done that reset, I wouldn't have a little hand symbol. And I don't know if you can see this on the video at all uh, in Adobe Connect, because I don't know if you can see my cursor. But when you guys hover over it, when you close your edit window, you see a little hand with an index finger pointing. And when I click it, Look and look, it gave me the note card. Voila, et voici. Now I'm going to um, make sure my object is, everyone can take a copy of it if you want. So you can get a copy of my script. You can create your own script using the same method. And let me read, see, do you see how handy this little site is for the auto script? What our goal here was is you didn't have to know how to program in order to have nine kinds of behaviors. If you wanted to play sound, if you wanted the object to move or follow people, if you wanted the object to say something, to greet people and say, welcome to the such and such presentation, you know, or whatever. If you wanted the colors to change of objects when they're touched or interacted with, you know, in some fashion. Many of you have been creating hovering text and so you can see what that does. You just click on it. You can say what color you want your hover text, what it should say, and then, uh, when it should say it, if you want it to always hover, you would say as soon as the script starts, right? Um, if you wanted it, uh, the when an avatar is nearby is not always reliable. So that's something to be aware of. It depends on the performance of the, of the simulator and it depends on your experience of it, you know, as a user. So there's several things. There's also uh, how often things happen. Do they happen only once? Like, um, Imagine for a moment we were giving something to an avatar and we were going to give them a note card and we were going to say when they're nearby within five meters and only one time. Well, if it only gave it and they didn't receive it, it'll never give it again until that object's reset, just so you know. So this is why that's not such a great idea. Okay. Any questions for me in any world? <laughs> I know you guys are going, oh, she just keeps talking, right? <laughs> but do you see how handy this is? Now you guys can um, right click my object, say more and take a copy, or I will go ahead and grab my artifacts right out of it. And I'll grab my script and I could also, I will select my script and share it with everyone who's around me. Um, so there you go. And Zalamar. There we go. So five of you have a copy of it, and then uh, the others for Tony and, and um, uh, whoever I'm missing, maybe it's the other Jeff, right? Um, let me know, and we will make sure you get this. Okay, so now, who's next? Now, if you don't want to be on video, uh, let me know. When you take a copy, ah, this is an object. So if you're right-clicking this and saying more and take a copy, that's the 12 o'clock position there in NAMSA. When you take a copy, it's, it's, um, I'll show you how that works. I'll take a copy. If I go to my recent items, you will notice it's not in, it's in the objects because, and I didn't name it, did I? Uh, that was really bad of me because now it's called primitive, which isn't very useful. Okay. An object that gives a note card. <laughs> 
<laughs> now you can take another copy. It has a name. Okay. Well, there we go. So I just took a new copy. And of course, the simulator is saying everyone's getting a copy at the same time. You always have to give your database a moment to catch up, right? Because remember, this entire world we're standing on is running on a Mac server in Dr. Stricker's farmhouse near his study in his home, okay? He lives on a farm. So this would be like visiting Namsa's server or visiting Brad's server, right? Yeah, see? Now, you have to res the object to get the script out, but here's the good news. I shared the script with everyone around my body. So check your scripts folder. If you accept, if you auto accept content, it's in your script folder. It's sometimes not wise to auto accept, but I do. And here's why. You go under privacy in your preferences. The reason I do it is so you guys can drop things on me and I auto accept them. Two things happen. If a, if a griefer was dropping malicious content on me, I have some safeguards in place that prevent me from having really catastrophic results. But I could get embarrassed. What if they gave me an object that looks harmless and when I res it, it's offensive, right? It could be content that, that embarrasses me. Well, I know to delete it, take it, um, or, or de if I de-render it, it only changes, it may only makes it invisible for me. The rest of you would still be offended by it, right? And that's what we call griefing. Uh, when someone does something that either, is either a prank or a malicious act, you know, uh, to distress other people and see how they react to it, right? Sometimes it's based on creativity and, and, uh, curiosity sometimes it's based on a desire to terrorize a, a, a bit not quite the same as hacking by the way but it is a social condition <laughs> and i got used to in fact i used to have anti-griefing strategies uh, because i refuse to let a malicious behavior rule me you know to constrain my behavior and so that's uh, something to be aware of okay now any questions who's next uh, if you don't want to be on video, please let me know either in Adobe Connect if you're there or uh, by an IM here and we won't we won't showcase yours on video. Hey, Namsa got my inventory. Thanks, Namsa. Namsa. And uh, Rod, you're good. Salomar, you are too. And so is Jeff. Well, it says I offered it twice. Uh, if you're not logged in, don't worry about it, okay? Because remember... The goal in this class is to make sure you have the best experience possible. And yes, I policed my content. So Rod, great, great work. Now, one thing to realize from our class requirements, I don't require you guys to map to augmented reality stuff, to map to gear, to other things, but Rod may be fashioning part of his doctoral research. Just as we saw Shannon Moon's doctoral defense today, she began her research in three of my classes, right? So she she uh, she took the mobile app development class to create the apps that mapped with her wearable gear that collected data from flight simulators as, as pilots were, were practicing soaring maneuvers, right? And of course, in crisis and having near uh, mid-air collisions, things like that. So the work we do in these classes can be part of the work that you're doing for your for your life practice or for your doctoral research, but it's not required. Um, I, I know Joe's thinking, I don't know if I'm going in the art museum business. Interesting, Joe, at the Federal Consortium of Virtual Worlds, I did support an art museum that was just absolutely breathtaking. And in a later class, I'll showcase a few things from it that might help you with your work. Okay, so who's next? Looking in Adobe Connect or in um in world does does anyone want to talk about their stuff all right so um i recently built the uh, the first step was building the making the building and as you can see it's made of parts and linked together uh it's not exactly seamless but um so i linked the parts and then i duplicated the whole building three times um, then I could play with the arrangement of the building such that you're making sure that people could walk, you know, through the building and then right into the next building and then right into the next. So I wanted, I wanted to build the, the whole environment to be easily navigated, but, but I want each space to be contained. So, 
So we're standing in what I call the red room right now. So the red room is meant to depict it's it's not it the only the uh, pictures are red. So I was thinking about making the entire inside red and I might experiment with that later. But the whole idea is just to give more of the experience of a psychological experience of redness, you might say. And it looks like right now all the pictures are showing the same same uh same picture. Yeah, okay. Cuz my other building I have different pictures. So these pictures I just put here as a placeholder. This is actually going to be the green room. Um, I made the the floor. Uh, this is wood floor. My other building has a tile floor. Um, I did have problem on occasion when I would uh, I had to when I copied a building and then I would have to unlink parts of it, and it was hard to unlink part of it. And then put it all back together, knowing which pieces, you know, are, you know, there might be one or two pieces that are disconnected. Next recording. Okay, this courtyard, I would like to, you know, do a little bit of landscaping. So grass, fountains or whatnot, so that it's a pleasant walk from one area to another. I noticed that... Um, you get you created this wall up ahead in front of us, and I cannot delete that wall or this or this other object to the to my right or to my left. Here's another here's an example of a room that I that I rezzed or I copied. Then I unlinked parts of it, and then I and then I accidentally moved it because I was trying to click on a tree. And it kind of disrupted the entire room. And it might be just be easy to build the room all, all over again. Okay. So the next steps is to uh, complement the, the uh, artwork with a uh, video or a... Um, the slide, the slide projector, the oh, I forget what you call it. And there'll be one positioned in each room. Yeah, so once I position the paint, the uh, the paintings, I usually have to twist it and and uh and move it, rotate it, and move it just to get it in a position right. It's out of position now because the entire room shifted, and some components did not shift with it. All right. Um. All right, that's all I have for for uh, my display today. Um, hey, thanks. I'm still, as I said, my next steps are to experiment with uh, texturing the the interior walls to see if adding basically red walls is going to be overwhelming or not. Uh, the the point of the room is to be overwhelming, though. You know that's some. And uh, the other the ne the other next step is to. Uh, work on some landscaping outside and to add the video monitor the the uh the slideshow each room will have a slideshow so the point is that uh, some some visitors may just want to experience the art other visitors may be interested in more technical aspects of the artworks themselves. That's why I would have the slide share, slideshow to complement the artwork. Okay. Thank you. I had my mic off and I was given all those instructions, Marcus, to the Adobe Connect room. But essentially I said um, that uh, 
by using a headset, we don't have an echo through the speakers. So we had feedback for you, Joe. I remember that in one of your reports, maybe the last one, you asked for a give a note card feature so that people could click your artwork and get some backstory on what they're seeing, maybe the name of it, um, uh, information about the artist, and, and some of the psychological elements of the room that you're trying to convey. That's why I did the give a note card feature. That script is for you. So you can write little note cards and you will edit the object, the, the part of it that's the parent, and put them inside the contents of each artwork. Secondly, I straightened this one for you. What was happening here, just so everyone knows, and if you have trouble selecting it, do a Control 3 to bring up your edit menu, Command 3 on the Mac, and left click the artwork, and you've shared with groups, so that's wonderful. And it, but if you have not shared with group, make sure make sure you check that share with group box. Oh, you're not in a group, Joe. So you can't share with group. So let's take a look. You need to join the EM825 group. And the way you do that is under uh, either the give me a control shift B for groups. That's the fast way to do it. Control key, shift key, and the G. Bring up your groups. And Marcus, you're welcome to join the group if you'd like. Um, and you're searching for the group EM Space 825. And you want to join it because we're all sharing our artifacts with the group so that we can help one another if, if, uh, if as desired. Now, I am able to do it because Dr. Stricker gave me a few godlike privileges, right? So what I did was I edited your object. I went to the Object tab. And in the lower left corner, I made it 0, 270, and one and 90 for rotation. Because the rotation had migrated a little bit based on what you said about the, the building moving, right? So your artwork was sunk into the wall. And all I did was straighten it up and pull it out just a few uh, millimeters, in case you're wondering. But you're right. The building is still off. And we can tell I'm showing on Adobe Connect. When I look at the edge of it, the bottom of it's still sunk into it. But we can fix this quite easily. And that's the value of collaboration, is the fact that if you have things that are a little bit off, you have people like, like me and your fellow collaborators, if their skills, if they're comfortable with it, who could take a look at it and go, ah, oh, I see, this is 89 degrees, and it should be 90 degrees for this one piece of wall here. And we could fix that for you or help you. Um, and you and you can too, but uh, it's nice to know that you have a team who's got your back, right? The next thing, um, Brad had a recommendation in Adobe Connect. And he says, uh, you may want to put your picture on just one surface of the box. Ah, and that's a good point. Remember that select face option? I'm going to pull this one out so you guys can see what we're talking about. On the very side of it, you'll notice you've, you've textured all faces of your box. And here's how you fix that. You edit your, your box. You click on Select Face in the upper left corner, the third option. And I'll bring it a little closer so that you can see that on the, menu, on the um, Adobe Connect video. Then I'm going to hold down the Shift key and deselect the front. Because the front, we want that to be depicted. But the other sides, we don't want to see the artwork. Now we have a couple choices. We could just texture them blank. In other words, you could go to the texture tab and you see where you see your artwork for those five faces that are not the front of it. And we could just say blank, right? And you guys see what happens on it? Uh, that we could get rid of it like that, or what some people do is they don't even bother with the texture. They just color it black if you wanted a, a black stylized back backdrop, right? It's up to you because you are the creator. So I'm going to leave it white for now, and then you decide, right? And then I'm just going to pull it back into where you had it. And now you don't have it. And, and so what that does is it gives a crisp look to your artwork so that you, and you'd see in Adobe Connect what we're talking about. Um, you normally wouldn't want your signage to be on all faces of the primitive shape, right? That's all we're talking about. But that was great. You know, you've look at all this progress. You built a building. I'll bet you at the beginning of term you weren't building buildings in in virtual worlds, and you have an archway, which e even to this day quite a few 
um, folks who are residents of Second Life aren't necessarily creating their own arches. So you've mastered the hollow and the, uh, the hollow shape because you went to a circle shape instead of a square. So there's all kinds of cognitive steps I'm seeing here, which are really uh, breathtaking for a novice user, for someone who's new to the virtual world. So congratulations. For you too, Rod, I didn't give you all the positive feedback because you're just like marching on. You're just uh, really uh, doing an, an excellent job in repurposing existing content and using open source work from Austin Tate, from the Open VCE community. And by the way, they love it when people bridge with them and collaborate back. So, um, so always feel welcome to connect with them. Don't don't ever feel disconnected by any means. I have his address somewhere. Anyway, because we're in, in the same groups. Uh, so, Joe, you had mentioned you wanted to give no card. So now you know how to get these things into your artifact, and you'll want to put it on the the biggest part. Like if you have linked these, or if this is only one primitive shape, obviously, uh, you just put it right into this artifact with that script. Okay, great work. And let's see, any other feedback? Control Z is oh, Control Z only works when you're dragging things back, and sometimes I have to do it twice. That's a really good point. So watch what happens. I'm going to drag it out for a moment, and now I'm going to control Z it back. And on the Adobe Connect, it took about seven seconds, but it went back, right? Every once in a while, I have to control Z twice. Uh, sometimes the simulator might be busy, perhaps the bandwidth, you know, I, I'm now kicking it uh, old school on Comcast, right? So <laughs> I'm still getting 200, uh, they say 200 gigabytes uh, or megabytes, whatever for download, but uh, who knows, right? But in any event, um, great job. You guys are doing wonderfully well. Now realize when we get done with all this, what matters most to me is not the fact that you have these incredible buildings, these wonderful shapes, these great presentations, mapping to AR or VR external content, but the fact that we have synthesized so much. You've learned to move, you learned to build, you've learned to, to integrate things. Things may not always obey your will, but you have mastered quite a few rudimentary skills, which is really breathtaking. We've done things we've never done in EMA 25 before, like we visited the hypergrid. We have installed our own open source servers. Some of you are working in your own sandboxes. You're importing content from different locations. You don't have to build everything. That's something for each of you to be aware of. And secondly, you can take it to the level of detail you want. And of course, we support you in that. But realize for the class goals, I am so pleased with everyone's progress. I just want you to realize that. So I always map it to where we began, what we've discovered, where we're going with it, and how we're thinking and rethinking how these spaces work. Okay, uh, Marcus, I think we're going to end at this point because I, uh, I, I have a few more things to cover with the class and then um, then I have to move to the next class. This is my second of three classes for this evening. <laughs> and the other one's not a virtual world one. But I want to thank you. See, I'm looking for Marcus here. I'm going to grab the people, double click oh, I'm, I'm him. He's over here. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's hiding so that he's not on camera, which is very, very kind of him. But I want to say thank you to Marcus Llewellyn. He is a cameraman extraordinaire who does all kinds of video and live streaming. And uh, it, where will this video be in case we want to see the world from your eyes, Marcus? Um, well, I'll, t I'll follow up with you on that. I thought I might do okay, a little great. bit of editing to smooth out the awesome. rough spots. And um, I will get back to you. That's uh, taken care of. Okay, for our Adobe Connect, I will say that Marcus is going to do a little bit of editing, and then he's going to host it probably on YouTube in your stream. Is that where? Certainly, or an I can Abacon do that. Or? or if you would rather, I can send you a copy, and you can host it wherever you'd like. Yeah, we're we're easygoing. Uh, we're just very pleased to have a professional helping us with this. And by the way, he's using an open source tool called Open Broadcaster uh, Studio. And I'll talk about that more later. Thank you, Marcus. I appreciate your help. You're always welcome, by the way. And thank you for coming to Virtual Harmony. Oh, very. Thank you very much. He says thank you.